Hey guys and welcome back. Happy Monday. Shala from PS I Love You. Today we are working on this great Father's Day card for my husband and I'll show you how I made that. Let's get started. So I am using my Silhouette machine today. However, to get this look you don't have to. I'm using the Lori Whitlock 5 Things I Love About You um, cut file as well as this pattern paper that I purchased off of Etsy because my husband is a huge math nerd. I wanted math themed paper. I also have these little um, tags here or these little sheets that we'll pull out with the of this pocket with the line paper and my kids can write on there the five things they love about dad. I also have these uh, numbered stamps that I pulled out of my stash so I'll show you how we put this all together. The first thing I want to do is I have this five and a half by five and a half square card that I want to put this uh, pattern paper on. Now you can do any theme for your special loved one and this doesn't have to just be for dad. Um, as you saw that was five things I love about you. I am going to modify this a little bit to uh, fit my husband. So I'm going to pull out my Fiskars trimmer and I am going to trim this down to the five and a half by five and a half inches to fit that square based card. This is a really great trimmer because it has that wire guide on it and you know exactly where you are cutting. So I'll go ahead and link these over at the Scrap and Stamp blog, the um, trimmer that I'm using as well as some of the supplies. Um, I'll also make some recommendations of what you can do if you don't have a silhouette machine of what you can use um, to achieve this look. All right, I really like this paper. It's so fun. It has all those math equations on it. And I just know that my husband is actually going to look at it and try and solve them. His idea of fun on our last vacation, uh, which was a trip to Vegas, was he sat at the poolside with his calculus book and did math. And uh, lots of people came by and uh, teased him about it. And you know, that's just the nerd I love. Um, so uh, it's funny that he loves math and I am really not good at math at all. <laughs> so the opposites really do attract. So I'm just going uh, go ahead and uh, adhere this down with just a tape runner is fine. I'll smooth that down. And then the next piece that I, look at that, I love that. Um, the next piece I have is this red piece. Again, this is another cut file, although you can use it back ground dye and I thought it looked like an abacus. Like abacus goes horizontal but I like the way it looks going vertical here just because it's opposite to the writing in the background. So I'll adhere it just a little bit differently and then we have this fun paper um, that also has some equations on it and this is going to create a pocket for us. So I'm going to grab my bone folder and I will smooth down those creases. Uh, my silhouette machine um, does add these score lines in for you. Um, however, if you are using um, a standalone die, um, you can just go ahead and um, either use a notch or, um, you know, just ad adhere this down or um, smooth it down um, and create uh, the pocket with what you have. To adhere this together I'm using the Gina K Connect Glue. It is a great strong liquid adhesive and because this is going to be pulled on I want to make sure that it's not going to come apart. So as I said if you don't have a silhouette machine you can create these with dyes or um, uh, dyes that you may have or products that you may already have like some lawn fawn products would work really well with this. Um, some of the slider components you could actually make the envelope envelope out of or if you have envelope makers you can do that. Um, again it's uh, use what you have to try and create the same look. You don't have to go out and buy anything um, special for this. I'm sure that you already have products or you can figure out how to make these little envelopes um, with what you already have. All right so now that that's adhered down I'm going to let it dry just a little bit and we're going to move on to these little cards and there are five of them so five things um, that we love about him and I'm going to put, um, I love all these colors, those are his favorite colors. He's very monochromatic, he likes blue, gray, white, black or red, those are all he usually wears. And I want to add the little numbers on top. So this number set that I have here is actually from a, a set that you can make day timers. Uh, so I'm going to use these as they work perfectly on those little circles. To create these little tabs you can just use your square or rectangle uh, dies and then add a little circle die on top to create that pull. I'm going to be using my Stamp Perfect to stamp this as these are 
new stamps that I haven't used before and I know that I'm going to have to stamp them a couple times to prime the stamp and to get a good impression of the ink on there. So it was also really difficult to pull that off the backing. So once I get those lined up, get my head in the way a little bit, I want to make sure that it's lined up perfectly. I can close the lid on my stamp perfect and then I'll ink that up with the uh, Versamark watermark ink. That's that clear sticky ink and I'm going to be doing some embossing with clear or either the White Ranger. And when I tip that, look at this. My kids, um, yeah, look at that. They must have been playing with my embossing powder. So I got that all cleaned up with a Swiffer and we'll go back at it. If you do make spills with embossing powder, um, a really great thing to use is a, a Swiffer wipe. It seems to pick it up really well. Um, I'll have to remind my kids to make sure that they close lids on things before they put them away. So again, just using that sticky ink, I'm going to stamp it a couple times. Uh, this did have a bubble in it and it wasn't um, letting me get a good um, impression. So I'm going to grab my Versamark marker and just kind of fill in the area that didn't get stamped down all the way. And then that way all the embossing powder will stick perfectly to it. So that's another little handy tool to have. If you don't get a really good impression with your Versamark, you can just use that pen to fill in any missed areas. So go ahead and apply this uh, Ranger white embossing powder, give it a couple of flicks. Um, I like to make sure I add a little bit more each time uh, just in case I miss some areas. You can use a paintbrush, um, like an old paintbrush, just to sweep away any of that excess embossing powder that sticks where you don't want it to. Um, the one thing I didn't do, and I, I always forget to do this, and I shouldn't, I should always do it, is use the embossing buddy bag or... Um, the embossing anti-static powder and that just really helps to make sure the embossing powder doesn't stick in areas that you don't want it to. So yeah, I, I kind of forgot to do that, but that's okay. It turned out rather well. Um, there are a few little uh, blank areas, but again, that's okay. It's it'll, it'll be fine. It's just for my husband. So I think if I was making it for somebody else, I'd, I'd probably redo it and take the time to make it a little more perfect, but I don't think he'll mind. All right, so I'll just continue to go ahead and move on to the number two tab and get that um, inked up. And again, it's just the same thing. I'm just gonna go along, line it up. I will ink it up with a Versamark, stamp it down, and then we'll do the embossing powder. I like to heat the front and back when I'm using the heat tool because the paper will warp just a little bit. So keep that in mind when you are embossing you want to make sure that your heat gun is really really hot before you bring it to your project and then when you're heating it um, have it on the front and then move it again to the back and then again back to the front and that just stops it from warping in one um, direction or another. All right so I've got that number two stamped down again it didn't stamp perfectly because it is a new stamp it almost seems that they need to get primed so I just take the bullet end of this um, watermark pen or watermark marker and um, fill in any areas. So it has the brush tip and the bullet tip on that pen. And then add the embossing powder, give it a little couple flicks, make sure it looks good, add a little bit more. And again, if there's any strays, I can take that paintbrush and move them away. So we'll go ahead and heat set that up and then we can move to the next little tab. For tab three, I'm going to be using the Versamark Claire Nocturne ink. I wanted the black on the white tab. This is by far my favorite ink when I'm doing any sort of sentiments. Um, it's just this beautiful, beautiful deep black color and I usually get a good impression every time. Um, again, with these newer stamps um, and there was air bubbles that seemed to form underneath them, um, I did have a little bit of issues, but um, you know, it's nothing that I can't overcome with another black marker and just fill in or fix any areas. So now I will actually use clear embossing powder to set this one and it'll just again keep up with that shiny look of the other tabs. And you can see um, how shiny that is once it's heat set. It's just beautiful and it matches perfectly um, with the other ones. I think it's a nice contrast of the 
uh, black in the middle there. So we got those all done and now I can see that they fit perfectly in my little envelope and I can start building the rest of this card out. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that I add these little note pieces on. Again, this is a cut file from Silhouette. You don't have to use a cut file. It's just note paper. So if you have a little notepad, you can even cut it down to fit onto your pieces. Or you can just have white paper as well for uh, the writing. I'm just adhering this down with my tape runner and lining it up. The one thing that's really nice if you do have a die cut machine um, or electronic cutting machine like a silhouette is that you can resize things or change things to suit you. Um, so it's not as, um, you know, static as a, a typical die cut would be, but I do love my metal dies, that's for sure. I, I can't give them up. So I got those little notepads all glued down onto my tabs and everything fits perfectly in the envelope. It slides in and out nicely, which is really important. You want to make sure nothing sticks. And I do that a couple times. You can also add embossing buddy or powder on there to make them slide easier. Um, just a little trick uh, if it seems to be sticking. So for this uh, one piece here that I think that looks like an abacus, I'm just going to add the Gina K Connect glue. Again, that strong adhesive to the back, making sure I get it on all those little pieces and strips. And then I will adhere that down onto the equation uh, paper there trying to get it as straight as possible. And then I can just press it down and give that a little bit of time to set up. Moving on to my envelope, because this is going to be pulled on, I want to make sure I'm going to use a very strong adhesive. I could use that Gina K glue, that liquid adhesive, but I want to use this score tape. Again, this is going to be pulled on, so I just want to make sure it is not going anywhere. So I'll go ahead and I put this all the way around the edge of this envelope to make sure that it's nice and secure. The other reason why I like to do this, um, I do have a little trick that I like to use with my score tape and I'll show you what I do. Um, it's, I only release half of the release paper. Sorry, that was really hard for me to say. Um, so I'm just going to take my little craft pick and I'll loosen off the backing of that adhesive paper and just halfway and then I will fold it out to the side. So I'm going to do that on each side and I'll show you what this allows us to do. Once I get everything all lifted up, um, it actually gives us these great little handles and that allows us to get a perfect placement of where we want that envelope to be. So I just simply flip this over, got these nice little tabs, and I can hang on to those tabs, line everything up where I want it to be, and then when I'm ready, I can just gently place it down and then pull on those tabs gently just to make sure I get all the, or pull all the release paper out. So I just wanted to make sure I had everything down there and again, just slowly pull it out and then it sticks down perfectly in place. I always seem to, if I release all the paper, I end up dropping it and then it sticks where I don't want it to. And yeah, so this is just my little trick to make sure that it works out well. So you can see here, these little envelopes are placed perfectly. I want to move on to our outside sentiment where we are saying five things we love about you. Um, and so this is just a, a stamp set that I have um, with the number five. I really kind of like the stitching on it. Um, the kids thought it was fun, so I'm going to go ahead and stamp that down. I'm using Memento Black Tuxedo ink. The reason I'm using Memento is I'm going to go ahead and Copic color this number five to kind of match the uh, blue cardstock paper that we have used. So in order to do this, I pull out some of my uh, Copic markers and just to see if the colors will match, I'll just apply them on the paper there on the scrap paper and then it'll uh, give me an idea if it matches up. I do it on the edge so I can bring it right over to the piece that I'm working with and it'll give me an idea if those tones are right. So I like the way that looks. I want some kind of highlighted areas and some darker areas so I'll go ahead and start coloring this up. Now I'm not going to bore you with the entire coloring of this because um, I'm not the best color so we'll just go ahead and skip forward to the next part of this card. 
All right, so I did do the lettering on my silhouette machine and I'm just releasing it off that um, adhesive, uh, what do you call it, carrier paper, <laughs> sorry. And I'm just using this with my little spatula, gently taking this off. And the original wording of this um, die cut was five things I love about you. I wanted to change this because we're going to have this from the whole family. So it's going to say five things we love about you. Again, this is how you can customize things a little easier. Um, you can actually do this with just some letter die cuts or stamps as well. Uh, I just wanted to, um, oh, there's my little Ypsilon, make sure you uh, don't lose those. Uh, the little, what's it called? Oh, the tittle. That's sorry, that's what it is. It's the tittle for the eye. I didn't want to use it, so I just grabbed it with my uh, reversible tweezers there and set it aside. So yeah, it's one thing that's kind of nice about these machines as well is you can customize it a little more. Um, I don't have alphabet die cuts yet. That's something that I want to invest in and they can be kind of pricey. So this time I just used my machine to go ahead and do this. And then as I'm using my little craft pick here to uh, press out any pieces that still kind of got stuck in there, um, they come out really easily. And then I can adhere that to my card. But as I'm working away here, I realize, you know, I'm not really in love with the things we love about you. I like it, but I wanted to change it even more. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to say things we love about dad. So I'm going to go and rework that in the software program and I'll show you how that turned out. So here you can see the original things we love about you and then I changed it to say things we love about dad and I cut it out in the red and the white just to give it a little white shadow background so it stands out more on the black. And there's that number five. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere that onto our envelope. And I'm gonna do that again with the Gina K Connect glue. I'm gonna remove these little, um, little what are they called, little tabs, and uh, that'll allow me to glue this on on a nice flat portion. Again, these are all things that you can make even without this die cutting machine. This is just an idea for you guys of what you can do. Take a look at the dies that you have. Uh, you can definitely figure out how to make little envelopes and create this more specifically. You could do one for fishing. You could do one for golf, um, little golf theme. And yeah, I just think you can really customize this and use what you have in your stash to make this happen, whether it be stamps or as standalone die cuts. All right, so now that i am got that wording down, I'm going to adhere my little five. I just fussy cut that out. Sorry, my son's in the, in the field there. He was um, playing Pokemon Go on my phone as I was working away. And then once that we've got that done, it just needs a little something else. So once I get the little tittles down, um, you want to make sure that uh, you don't lose those again. I like to put those in my tweezers right away uh, so I don't lose them because I usually always do. <laughs> All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll move along and I'll show you the last final touch that we did for this card. Even though this is a card for my husband, I couldn't resist putting a little bit of sparkle on here just to make the sentiment stand out even more. Uh, this is the really great Nouveau Shimmer Pen. Again, I will link this over on the Scrap and Stamp blog and the link to that will be down below. Uh, go ahead and head over there and check it out. Uh, Scrap and Stamp does have some wonderful sales going on as well, so make sure you take advantage of those. Um, yeah, the sparkle just really makes this sentiment pop and the sparkle that this Nouveau Pen has is it's astounding. I wish you could see it in person. Uh, the video and the pictures just don't do it justice, but it adds so much to your project. So once I get that all glittered up, I'll go ahead and show you a close-up look of how this card looks. And now that the card is done, you can see that shimmer and shine from the embossing and that Nouveau glitter pen. I pull out the little tabs here and my kids can write on there what they love about their dad. I just think this is a really fun card and a really great keepsake and I just stamped Happy Father's Day on the inside. So here's a fun math 
uh, card for the nerd in your life um, as it is for the nerd in mine. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for stopping by. Go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Take care, guys.